What's up everybody, Nate here. And the Federal Reserve just raised their interest rates by 0.25% or 25 basis points. And the economy is not gonna be happy about it. Now the Federal Reserve in its most recent policy meeting did talk about when it might stop interest rate hikes altogether and when it might actually start lowering them and it might be as soon as this summer. Now that would have huge implications on our economy, inflation, you name it. And today we're going to be talking about all of it, starting with the four things that these interest rate hikes and this new interest rate hike affect the most. We're talking about banks, we're talking about consumers, we're talking about investors and businesses. Now, if we start with banks, banks have had a little bit of a liquidity crisis over the last few months or so, and this all stems from Federal Reserve interest rate hikes. The reason that this has been affecting banks so aggressively is that banks do a lot of dealings with investors, and they also do a lot of dealings with consumers, and they have a ton of assets. The problem is, as the Federal Reserve has started to raise its interest rates, all of the assets and all of the businesses that these banks have worked with, well, they have been getting a whole lot less returns. This is the exact reason why we saw Silicon Valley Bank fail, Signature Bank fail, and recently Credit Suisse. These banks went under because debt is getting a whole lot more expensive and all of the assets are losing value because a lot of investors and a lot of these businesses aren't pumping as much money into those assets. So you have a situation where banks had bought billions, if not hundreds of billions of dollars worth of assets over the last few years, like mortgage-backed securities and corporate bonds and treasury bonds. But as the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates, well, all of those assets have lost a ton of value. This has meant that as these banks started to sell off their assets, well, they were taking huge losses. And because a lot of these banks have uninsured funds, that means they didn't have enough money to give back to all of their depositors. So we're talking about startups and businesses and just regular consumers consumers, anybody that had money into the bank, and that meant that the bank was going to completely collapse. And that is what we have seen in big banks. And now we're starting to see regional banks fall under the same issues. The Federal Reserve raising interest rates makes that entire situation a whole lot worse because now it's a lot harder for businesses and investors and everybody to get money. And because businesses have not been getting as much funding and have not been investing as much and their assets are going down, they've been burning through cash, which means the bank is getting a whole lot less cash too. All of that now becomes worse because the Federal Reserve raises its interest rates, sparking less demand and making it harder for people to borrow money and get their hands on money. Now, the second thing that the Federal Reserve interest rate hikes affect is businesses. Now, businesses have done a lot over the last few years and they have grown a lot. This is because interest rates have been low for a very long time and that has meant that businesses could get a lot of investor liquidity and they could take on a lot of debt because their interest rate for paying that debt off was not going to be nearly as high as the profits they could make by taking on billions of dollars in debt. So it made sense for a lot of businesses to go into corporate debt and take on investor debt because they wanted to grow as fast as possible. And one of the other reasons why they wanted to do this was because we had the pandemic where not a lot of people were working and supply chain issues. So businesses taking on this debt kind of maximized our entire economy. So they started to hire a lot of people. They started to expand and their businesses. They wanted to open up new factories because all of that is going to help bring down inflation. So that is what businesses have done over the last couple of years. But this debt has kind of ballooned out of control for a lot of businesses. And now they have to figure out ways to pay it all off. And because inflation is still a pretty serious problem in our economy, well, consumers aren't spending as much money because their wages aren't going up nearly fast enough. They are only buying essentials right now. So a lot of consumers are not pumping any extra money into the economy like they were just a couple years ago. So you have that situation. Businesses aren't getting as big of profit because of that, so their business isn't able to grow. On the other side, investors aren't putting as much money into the stock market and businesses because it's a lot more risky for them to take on money right now. They can't take on any additional debt because it would cost them way too much money in order to pay all that debt back. So they're not investing as much either. And now with the Federal Reserve raising interest rates even more, you have businesses getting hit twice. Businesses are not getting as much money from investors or consumers, so that means they have to cut costs even more with interest rates continuing to go up. That could mean cutting costs from employees, that could mean cutting costs from a variety of different products, closing stores, you name it. Businesses are going to try to do whatever they can here in order to stay in business, and that could mean unemployment is about to go up. Now the third thing here is consumers, because consumers play a huge role in our economy as well. Like I said, with inflation, 
inflation rising and interest rates rising at the same time, consumers are in a little bit of a tough spot because they're not able to spend as much money because things cost a lot more. But they also can't go out and get things like a mortgage or get a car loan as easily because those costs are also rising. Millions of Americans have been barred out of the housing market simply because interest rates for a new mortgage are going up. They simply can't afford the monthly payment, so they're not able to get a house. And this is designed by the Federal Reserve, again, to bring down inflation. They want inflation and demand to come way down because if people aren't spending money, then prices are going to remain under control. And that is exactly what the Federal Reserve wants to do here. So basically, consumers' money is going to get hit really hard here. With the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, that means that inflation can hopefully start to come down, but it also means that consumers aren't going to be able to spend as much money anymore. With the hardship kind of falling on banks and businesses, well, banks might not want to loan as much money if they're not having as much liquidity, which means their standards for lending could go way, way up as they don't want to just give anybody money, especially people who might lose their job and might not be able to pay back that loan. And the fourth and final thing here is investors. Now, this affects investors big time because again, it affects the borrowing rates in the United States. So it's a lot more difficult for an investor to take on money right now. That means they're not going to be able to invest as much money. So the stock market is going to take a huge hit because of that. And everything is going to follow suit because you don't have as much liquidity in the market. You don't have as much liquidity for businesses. And if businesses don't have as much money, they're not going to put as much money into banks. Banks are then not going to have as much money to give to consumers. So basically you have this entire circle that makes makes up our economy and it is all getting affected here by the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. Now what we need to talk about next is why. So the Federal Reserve has been raising interest rates for a really, really long time now, about a year, but they have been trying to get aggressive on inflation by raising their rates really quickly. They want inflation to come way down. So why are they only raising their interest rates by 0.25%? Well, the reason for this is because there is a huge problem in the banking sector right now. Now, and this is something Jerome Powell talked about in his press conference following the rate hike. He said that while our banking system is really, really strong, we have to sort of ensure credit stability and liquidity in the market because this is a big problem that happened after the last big banking collapse in 2008 with Lehman Brothers. People didn't really trust banks. There wasn't a lot of money getting pumped into the system because, well, all of the assets were losing value and that's where banks get their money. So with all of that going down, nobody was able to invest. Nobody was able to get a loan. Everybody was pretty much stuck. So the Federal Reserve has now stepped in to provide a lot of that liquidity through a lot of different programs. But they want to make sure that investors and businesses and banks can get the money that they need to continue to grow. So they want to be really tough on inflation like they have been over the last year or so, but they also don't want our entire economy to collapse. This is the balance the Federal Reserve must deal with every single time it makes a decision. Not only that, but you've got to understand that inflation still really is high in our economy and the Federal Reserve knows that and they want to do everything they can to bring it down because our currency is the reserve currency of the world and we have a big debt crisis so the Federal Reserve wants to make sure that other countries still want to use our money. They want to make sure that banks throughout the world have U.S. dollars in liquid form so they can continue to go out and spend U.S. dollars because if nobody's using U.S. dollars, if no country wants to take U.S. dollars anymore and hold on to them, well, that means the value goes down even faster. And that is not a good situation for the Federal Reserve. They want our money to be valuable on the global stage. They want people to use it. However, at the same time, the Federal Reserve also wants to keep our economy under control. And the way that they do that is through price stability. Price stability means that prices are stable across the board. So every time you go to the grocery store, you're not seeing products go way, way up in price. We need to have price stability so that way wages can pretty much remain the same and prices also remain the same because if one thing is out of balance that throws off your entire economy if you have people making way too much money well now they're buying too many things and that means prices need to go way up but then people aren't making enough money again so they need raises and then if they buy too much again prices need to go back up this is called the wage price spiral and it can essentially tank your economy due to the inflation it causes but now the situation is very much different, right? Because all of these businesses and these banks that have taken on huge lump sums of debt, well, now they have to figure out a way to pay that money back. And yeah, interest rates are going up, but they have ways to account for that. But the 
other problem is a lot of these businesses were able to sell a lot of their debt off to the Federal Reserve. While the Federal Reserve was lowering its interest rates over the last couple of years, it was also doing something else, quantitative easing. This meant that it was pumping money into the stock market and then the stock market was booming because of that. Now the Federal Reserve was buying corporate bonds and other types of securities through these businesses and that meant the businesses had extra liquidity to go out and invest so they could grow despite what was going on in our economy. Now the Federal Reserve is running off its balance sheet, meaning it's not buying what it was buying before. So now all of these assets like mortgage-backed securities and corporate bonds that used to be super valuable because the Fed was buying them, now businesses are losing money on them. And that means everything else is starting to shrink in our economy. Now, what exactly could be next from the Federal Reserve? Well, the Federal Reserve and Chairman Jerome Powell talked about when they could actually pause and stop their interest rate hikes completely. And he kind of hinted at this might be sometime soon. We have a full on banking crisis in the United States. Inflation has slowly started to come down. These are all reasons why the Federal Reserve might want to pause or lower its interest rates sometime soon. The Federal Reserve can only lower demand so much before you have a full on recession because eventually things are going to be way too expensive, right? Nobody's going to be able to get a house. Nobody's going to be able to spend on a credit card or get an auto loan. These are staples of our economy and eventually the Federal Reserve will make it impossible to spend any money. Our entire economy will be too restrictive. We are starting to get to that point, which means what could be coming next is the worst part of the Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes. We're talking about unemployment. We're talking about potentially more banks starting to see failures because they're taking big losses and people are pulling their money from the banks. We could potentially see more investors pull out because they don't want to put their money into this risky market and we could see consumers stop getting things like mortgages and auto loans and spending on a credit card. Now eventually whenever the Federal Reserve does decide to stop raising its interest rates well that could mean that the entire economy goes back up but they have to be very very careful when they decide to do this because if inflation is still pretty high well then inflation will just go right back up if they pump way too much money into the economy if way too many people start spending money all at once so if the Federal Reserve lowers its interest rates people will be able to go out and get a mortgage investors will be able to invest easily again and that means that asset prices will go up for businesses and banks and that means our entire economy will boom but also prices will go up and our money will get a whole lot less valuable which means you need to keep making more and more and more and eventually that is just not sustainable so the Fed has to be careful when it does that and that really just depends how long businesses and banks like Silicon Valley Bank can survive for now I can't see into the future I don't know when the Federal Reserve is going to pause its interest rate hikes I don't know when it's going to lower them but I know that this will have a big effect on our economy and you should too and you need to know how to handle your money when that time comes this all comes from financial education and the more educated you are the more you will be able to capitalize on whatever our economy looks like over the next few weeks and months the best way to do that is to stay up to date with everything that is going on in the business of financial world and if you want to do that our team puts together a free daily newsletter six days a week we're talking global economy local economy inflation crypto you name it we're talking about it over over on Market Brief. So if you want to subscribe, you can do that for free by clicking the link in this corner right here. And if you want to stay up to date with me and everything else happening in the business and financial world, I am putting out updates seven days a week over here on this channel, breaking down everything from financial education to all of the craziness happening on Wall Street and the housing market, you name it. So be sure to do that before you go. And if you want to learn more about what's happening right now, I've got another video right there for you. So be sure to check that out before you go. That is it for me, everybody. Be kind out there, and I'll see you all in the next one.